Okay. Okay. Well, why don't we st <coughs> talk a little bit about muscle diseases? Okay. Okay. So <clears throat> there are a number of ways to categorize muscle diseases. Uh, one of them in this paper in radiographics from last year I thought was uh, useful. There are atraumatic <coughs> abnormalities, which has to do with abnormal anatomy and normal signal, which would be the anatomic variants, a lot of which we've significant ones we've talked about over the course of the year. Edema, and edema but within muscles can be to autoimmune disease, perineoplastic disease, drug-induced myositis, uh, infectious diseases, uh, but but... But these are these ones are symmetric. Infection, radiation induced, and myonecrosis typically are focal and asymmetric. So whether it's symmetric or not is is very helpful. Uh, masses, obviously primary neoplasms, metastases, and then some benign things. Uh, typically, the masses <coughs> uh, require a biopsy. Uh, one thing that I've think is extremely rare are just benign cysts. Most things that look like benign cysts end up being uh, uh, sarcomas, uh, mix, mixoid sarcomas typically. You can also get lipomas, vascular malformation, fib uh, fibromatosis and fibrous tissue, and then obviously acute hematoma. And then you get atrophies, which we've talked about, muscular dystrophies, denervation, myopathy, sarcopenia, which is diffuse muscle fatty atrophy, primarily in older individuals. Uh, mostly probably, it can be related to a lot of things, including drugs, but mostly it's probably just uh, related to uh, couch potatoitis or, or just uh, disuse atrophy. Uh, and then there are acute injuries, you know, which typically are muscle tears. And there's a British classification, which some people in the uh, sports medicine world like to follow. Uh, grade zeros, where you just have uh, muscle soreness with a normal MR. Uh, <clears throat> typically, delayed, delayed months onset muscle soreness syndrome. I think we talked a little bit about it in some of the lectures. <coughs> typically occurs... Uh, starting about 24 to 48 hours after exercise, usually peaks at uh, two to three days, and is usually normal and gone by seven days. If it lasts longer than that, you're probably dealing with more of a tear. And you have small tears where you get a little bit of fascial edema, less than five centimeters in length in the muscles, or you can get focal muscular tendinous junction injuries, which we've seen in a number of muscles. Uh, then grade two is a moderate muscle tears, uh, peripheral muscle edema involving more than 50% of the of the muscle, uh, uh, and then internal edema, and then if you see muscle within the, I mean edema within the muscle which extends into the uh, tendon, that would be a grade two, and then extensive muscular tears, and then complete tears grade four. Personally, I don't actually use this grading system. I try to describe the lesion. <coughs> enough so that if someone wants to use this grading system, they can take the description and put it into it. And this is primarily for doing research. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now, <clears throat> what uh, some of the people in Britain claim is that if you use this grading system, then it correlates to when a person can return to play. Uh, grade 1 is 1 to 2 weeks, grade 2 and 3 are generally 4 to 6 weeks, uh, grade 4 is generally greater than 6 weeks. Though a lot of the people I've talked to find that uh, this grading system isn't that good of an indicator. You still have to, but, but this is a, a rough indication of about how long it takes. The problem is, with a lot of these, if you go back too soon, you risk re-injury, and usually the injury is at a greater level than it was before. So... Uh, uh, you have to take this recommendation with a little bit of grain of salt. And if they do go back to play, typically the, it's not a good idea for them to go back into full strenuous activity right away. Okay. Let's see, who did the last case? Thomas. Sure. It was Thomas. Thomas. So axial images, um, I see there is a, um, 
something on the on the marker area like uh, there is some increase due to increase signal um, I don't know what muscle would be that one uh, so, so what, what's the what's the abnormality here um, look, at, look at the compartment anterior compartment uh, there is some uh, fluid You'll notice that the muscle signal intensity is normal. Right. It's uniform with, with all of these. And he only develops the symptoms of the mass with exercise. And what this is, there's actually abnormal bulging of the muscle here, uh, which actually can become symptomatic uh, in that location, right where the, where the marker is. And uh, if you actually tense the muscle, it can become larger. And this is called a fascial herniation. Okay. And I think the first description of this was a case that we had back when I was Cedars a long time ago, back in the late 1980s, that was uh, uh, that we published. Uh, but to, to, uh, you really should be able to see the fascia all around, mm -hmm. and here we can see there's a defect in the fascia back here. Uh, you can, it's primarily the history. Okay. The, the MR basically shows that it's. Uh, you have benign, uh, you're not dealing with a, a more pathologic entity. John? I didn't have anything to say other than your mic was too far away. Okay, thanks, John. Would you operate on these uh, uh, the, the one that we reported, they elected not to operate on it. Uh, you don't want to operate on the anterior compartment fascia. Uh, if you, unless you want a compartment syndrome, uh, if anything, you want to open it more. Talk about compartment syndrome, John. Here's a case. Okay. Prior fasciotomy for compartment syndrome, direct trauma six days ago with increased pain and swelling. So it looks like uh, there's a sort of ill-defined area of edema. Um, involving the lateral vastus lateralis, probably there. So there's basically the plane of the fascia. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's sort of pooching out outside of the plane of the fascia there. Yeah, it looks like they have some fat there, but also some water. Yep. And this is another fascial herniation. Fascial herniation, postoperative fascial herniation. Mm -hmm. From a fasciotomy for compartment syndrome. Compartment syndromes on the thigh are. <laughs> Quite unusual unless you have a fracture. I, um, I'm, I've taken care of a lot of athletes. I, I never saw compartment syndrome in the thigh. Okay. The hyperintensity. There is a hematoma or a, or a, uh, yeah, a tear. I, I'd like to see some of the other images well, to try to figure out what it is. I don't think it's going to be a hematoma. I think this is just going to be some loose cerebral tissue with fat in it. Uh, this is probably a cyst fluid uh, d due to due to the herniation and the muscle injury. Forty-one-year-old female patient with pain two days after being stepped on by horse. Um, so it looks like we have an MRI of the thigh. Um, I believe it's a coronal, maybe posterior, and uh, there's a. Uh, Hyperintensity in the lateral aspect of the, I don't know if that's the biceps muscle there, uh, biceps femoral, or uh, so and that looks edema on the muscle here. Edema. You're probably seeing some oh, subcutaneous fat here and subcutaneous tissue as well. Tissue. Uh, this is. Um, this is maybe a little more posterior, and uh, there's an intramuscular. It's, it's probably uh, it's probably very lateral here. It's lateral, so this would be medial. This is lateral. Lateral. So yeah, yeah, the axial images. That's what we have. Okay, so uh, here um, on the lateral aspect, looks like uh, it's uh, uh, quadriceps, lateral quadriceps. There's a hyperintensity. I think it's a hematoma, probably with tear. And subcutaneous hematoma as well. So that's a, a hemorrhagic crush injury. 
So you got to be careful when you're horsing around. <laughs> Also known as severe contusion. Yep. Generalized um, areflexia, elongated face, extracular muscle limitation, ketosis, okay, muscular dystrophy or something. So, um, a lot of muscle atrophy. Um, it's not all muscles, actually. Let's see, it's kind of strange. So, um, in the in the thighs, the the glutes are, are pretty atrophied. So, so uh, the, the more important thing here is that the atrophy the atrophy is very symmetric. Yeah. Which, uh, like we talked about before, then we're really talking about some sort of a generalized phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Here's the CT scan. So we we see an atrophy with a lot of increased fat within. The involved muscles. Mm -hmm. So, what's your diagnosis? A muscular dystrophy? Yeah, it's a, it's a dystrophy. Some kind of dystrophy. This happens to be, you have to biopsy. <laughs> uh, and this was a, something called central nuclear myopathy, which is a muscular dystrophy syndrome, right? Okay. Uh, Sahar. Okay. 21 year old female, progress at GAD servants since the childhood, blind with the mouth, prior palate, normal mobilosis, but I don't the schedule. Facial weakness on weak eye closure. Okay. Okay. Okay, there is severe atrophy of the posterior thigh muscle, the gluteus maximus, and all the posterior thigh muscles, all the hamstrings. So again, this has an appearance uh, of a congenital myopathy. <coughs> the tissue diagnosis typically has to be made uh, by biopsy. Okay, Thomas? 36-year-old uh, fem female myotubular centronuclear myopathy, myasthenia gravis as the differential. So the CT and uh, yeah, the diffuse bilateral atrophy, the gluteus maximus, hamstrings, quads also, and uh, severe in the lower leg. Yeah, so again, this is a muscular dystrophy. Okay. So when you talk about these kind of, there are, there's a, a big differential, uh, the <coughs> different kinds of dystrophies, and uh, <coughs> Uh, and from Guillain-Barre's syndrome to all the hereditary neuropathies to actually hereditary muscular dystrophies. So, uh, um, they, they, they have a treatment for the Shane's uh, muscular dystrophy, but it's it's extremely extremely expensive. Yeah, and some of these other genetic type diseases, they'll probably develop more treatments, but. It's, yeah, uh, to, to develop those kinds of treatments, it, especially if they involved uh, gene transfers. Uh, yeah, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I see. 10 year uh, old uh, progressive extremity weakness for six years, cough, pseudo hypertrophy. Lumbar lordosis, moderate tightness of the iliotibial band, tightness of the cuffs, CK, CK okay, very, very high, yeah, active myopathy. Active so, symmetrical atrophy. So, so, so again, really showing the same symmetrical oh, okay. fatty, fatty atrophy of the muscles. Right. And uh, again, this is a again, central right. There are many different, I think, my understanding is that there are many different genetic abnormalities that can produce this kind of clinical syndrome. And uh, uh, over the, over your careers, there will probably be a fair amount of progression in understanding what these are and potential treatments. 
And Duchenne's is certainly one of the most common, also called childhood muscular dystrophy. And it's uh, typically four to six years of age, usually death by 10 to 20 years. And uh, you get symmetric wasting. <laughs> okay, so this is a 32-year-old female. So it looks like she has no muscular mass at all. It's all fatty replacement. Thinking Duchenne's in this case. Not much bone either. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And this is limb girdle muscular dystrophy. But the, the main thing is just to <clears throat> get a picture of what these uh, systemic kind of diseases are. And then the actual diagnosis really is not made just based upon uh, imaging findings. a 21-year-old female patient with muscle weakness, and the CT shows a diffuse uh, symmetric uh, fatty atrophy of the posterior thigh muscles. Uh, looks like also on the this lower... This a little bit more asymmetric than some of the... Oh, yeah, muscles, more on the right still, side. Yeah. Still, it involves both sides. Yeah, on the right and side... It, <coughs> another form of muscular dystrophy. Somebody who's talking needs a CT scan. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bug you. Fifty-seven-year-old man, uh, dysphagia for three years, progressive muscle atrophy, uh, weakness and atrophy of the shoulder girdle muscle, positive posterior scapular depression sign. Um, father and brother had these, so it's some kind of mitochondrial thing, I, I would think. But let's see, so it's asymmetric. Um, right hamstring, yeah. Uh, so it's, maybe it's not my, I mean, it's, I think that that was, okay, great, thank you. So the thing was saying that it was um, father, his father and brother had it, right? Right. So I, I would think it's a mitochondrial issue, but that would that would be systemic, it would be like symmetric and everything, wouldn't it? Why is it just, I think at this point, it shows that it's uh, genetic. I think you'd have to look more detail to see whether it's mitochondrial versus uh, inside the cell. Well, what my point is, why is it so asymmetric, the genetic? Yeah. Uh, the, the, it's actually, it's, it's asymmetric, but still it involves both sides. And uh, it it's, can be very variable. But again, this just shows, you know, you have to make the diagnosis based upon non-imaging findings. So this is also no. So this is not, not uh, mitochondrial. So yeah, sister, they were added to this. <laughs> okay, uh, Sahar. Okay, forty-four year old male weakness. <clears throat> we see kind of like mild to moderate fatty atrophy, pretty symmetric bilaterally, and we don't see much else. Another muscular dystrophy. Yeah. <laughs> Just a, another congenital uh, uh, muscular dystrophy. Okay, Thomas. <laughs> a 27 year old male, both leg weakness and atrophy for one year. Uh, physical exam toe gate disturbed on the left side, heel gate disturbed bilaterally. Bilateral pes ca cavus deformities, distal leg atrophy, generalized a reflexia. So there's atrophy of the maybe the tensor fascia, a lot of the adductors, hamstrings, and the soleus and the gastrocnemius. No evidence of neurogenic muscle damage, abnormal fiber type distribution, and abnormal dystrophin expression. Okay. Interesting. No evidence of neurogenic muscle damage for a shark memory tooth really is a neurogenic disorder. Okay. One thing I remember, I think most of those uh, kids are blonde. 
Okay, 72 years old male, lower extremity weakness for five months, painful gait disturbance for one year, diffuse muscle atrophy in the leg and foot, normal sensory function, disturbed toe and heel gait, EMJ, uh, degeneration process, and past history to family history, two brothers expired or as same uh, symptoms. So again, um, fatty atrophy, uh, symmetric, involving bilateral gluteus, uh, yeah. So this started in someone who's, who's really uh, elderly. Right. And it's also a short form of the tooth disease. Wow. There are multiple reasons for the mutations, but depending on how long you have uh, abnormal myeloma. The way I remember it, John, I may be wrong, but I think the disease is picked up in the feet first. Yeah, because those are the longest nerves. That's right. Yeah, K, K was deformity. Yeah, right. So there are different neuropathies that you can have that can involve the neuromuscular the, the muscles and traffic neuropathies, which we've seen a lot of throughout the year. They had hereditary neuropathies, which uh, several different kinds of Chateau Marie tooth. My, my ex uh, pediatric chief had uh, two kids uh, that were uh, his adopted kids uh, that had the disease. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And then Guillain Barre syndrome, which is uh, really has to do with typically response to a viral infection and then Frederick's ataxia, and then all the muscular dystrophies. Well, Guillain Barre is temporary, isn't it? It's usually, you can get see in mo most most cases partial to complete response over time, but not always. Yeah. Okay. Who's next? Okay, 36-year-old woman, left lower extremity weakness for four days. So I see a lot of edema throughout the musculature of the left thigh and to a lesser degree the right thigh, proximally. Um, since it's bilateral, I would think something more systemic. So that was T2, this is T1. And T Okay, again, I see lots of edema on the left greater than right side. Um, and lower down as well. After a week, it looks like, it looks a little worse probably on the left side. The right side, I don't know if we're just out of it, but it looks better. Okay. Oh, okay, now it looks like, are these post-contrast here, some yeah, of them? It looks like, yeah, it looks like there's infarcts or uh, necrosis of the muscle. Taking sleeping pills regularly, taking the pills double dose as usual and fell down from bed. Um, her LDH is really high, her CPK, so she's probably in uh, rhabdomyolysis. A lot of drugs that can do it. So I you know, kind of remember it if you see what looks like diffuse model lysis. Uh, uh, this is probably the most common cause. The last image was post contrast. Yes. Post contrast. Most rhabdomyces occurs in overactivity. Yeah, you can certainly get it. 46 year old. Usually, then it's focused to those muscles that you. Also, trauma. You can also get it with trauma. 46 year old female patient with schizophrenia and bipolar disorder presents to the ER with two day history of headache, vervision, left leg and hip pain, and new painful right neck mass. CPK and admission was 
uh, 13,435 elevated selected images of the brain spine and pelvis to follow. Uh, so there is some um, axial images show edema and swelling at the post right postural lateral neck muscles, um, looks like hyper intense, and it looks like also maybe the masticator muscles bilaterally, also in the uh, gluteal muscles on the left, uh, more than right. And, um, yeah, it looks like uh, probably myelitis or rhabdomyolysis, like edematous muscles. Uh, there's enhancement, uh, peripheral enhancement, similar to the prior case. It looks like there's lack of perfusion like centrally. A, so there's probably maybe necrosis uh, centrally. So what do you think is going on? Um, she was, she's been having pain and she has schizophrenia, I guess could be also drug induced if, if she's taking some rhabdomyolysis. Okay. Myolysis, yeah. So this is just a little presentation that Dr. Sue sent. <coughs> some form of muscle disorders. So what do you think of this one? Is that a 1.67 year old or a 67 year old? 67 year old. Right. The sudden onset pain, swelling of the right forearm. Sudden onset, I'm just sitting there doing nothing. Um, well, I guess it could be infected. It could be like fasciitis here um, or some kind of myositis. Uh, cute compartment. Okay. Well, Okay, I mean, that would be kind of second. That doesn't tell us what the primary issue is, right? So, <coughs> compartment syndrome typically you'll have one. Where you get sense of edema within the muscles, and you want to treat it before you actually have loss of perfusion and necrosis of the muscle, obviously. Here we can see the diffuse uh, edema within the muscle. And... Uh, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, anything that can increase the space, burns, uh, trauma, heavy exercise, as people talked about. You get venous occlusion, nervous ischemia, arterial occlusion, and finally tissue necrosis. Yeah. Nervous ischemia. What? The anterior compartment of the uh, lower extremities is, is, is the most common of all of these. Okay. In, my, in my experience. Good. good. Sam, what do you I just, I see nerve ischemia on there. I'm wondering how that would cause swelling of the muscle if, or whatever. No, is it the soft tissue? Oh, oh, I see. Trauma. What's the underlying issue there? Do we know? On this patient? I, they don't tell us. I don't know. Probably trauma. Does that patient? And I I don't know. Yeah. I'm, uh, what I said that uh, the anterior compartments are usually from trauma or overactivity. Yeah. Uh, Sahara, what do you think of this case? Okay, fifty-five-year-old female, swelling pain, uh, limited range of motion of left shoulder. Again, there's a lot of edema and there is a lot of necrosis in the left upper extremity muscle. It's another case of, yeah, the arrow is also pointing to it. So is it an rhabdomyolysis or is it focal? Yeah, rhabdomyolysis. And uh, <clears throat> it can easily go on to myonecrosis, especially if you have compartment syndrome. And you can end up with renal damage from all the myoglobulinemia myo -globul that you can have. Okay. Uh, uh, you, you got the renal shutdown. Right. So, Thomas, what do you think of this one? A 57 year old male, movable mass in the right thigh. Uh, looks like there's a fluid collection anterior to the femur. Um, it could be a hematoma from a contusion. Here. Okay. With a little peripheral enhancement. And there's an ultrasound. 
Yeah, an ultrasound uh, sort of isoechoic, and there's not much, little minimal vascularity on the periphery. A little hyperechoic in there. Okay. And this was myonecrosis. Okay. And uh, the ultrasound can help differentiate it from an abscess. There was a lot of uh, this kind of T2. Okay, 50 uh, years old, male trauma, multiple fracture. Okay, so um, on the iliosuous muscle, uh, yeah, there is a disc herniation and uh, abnormal increased signal within the muscle. And I think there is a hemorrhage. Yeah, right iliosuvus and left iliosuvus also has uh, abnormal uh, signal and septation and hematoma probably. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's hematoma fashion. <coughs> Sorry, I guess it could be. We don't see it. <coughs> <coughs> Characteristic signal changes on the hematoma, but I guess it could be chronic. Mm -hmm. the on the place. right, sure. So necrosis, uh, muscle necrosis there. Yeah, the enhancement really looks like necrosis. Right. <clears throat> yeah, both sides. Look like this. All wow. Place. So all my necrosis. Wow, why is happening? It's so. Yeah, no vascularity, just the uh, echo. So, let's let me go back here for a second. Uh, so, the dates are. so this is 10-3-2011. This is 11-1-2011. So this is a month later. Yeah, it's getting better. But there's still lots of minor crosses there. This is all rectal Okay. Wow. Male weightlifter with three days right elbow pain after curls. So it looks like there's a lot of edema within the biceps muscle, the anterior muscle. Um, I don't see a tear. So if this is three days after curls, it could be DOMS, delayed onset muscle so soreness. a little late for that. And I would expect it in three days that most of the edema would be gone if it were DOMS. And there's also some subcutaneous edema here. So this is really uh, more severe than that. And so most people call oh. this rhabdomyolysis okay. at this point, post-exercise. Post what, what some of these guys try to do is show off to see how who can do the most curls or who can do the most lifts and so on and that's what happens yeah. okay well, why don't we stop here and we'll carry on uh tomorrow thank you thank you thanks yeah. thank you john yes john are you the guy that's still coughing yes i'm the guy who's still coughing i disagree with those two doctors